So now we are at step seven of the README, which is receiving data. So we're going to have the Java app send data to our ESP32, which will receive the data. Um, for the sake of this demo, we're going to have uh, a Java app here we'll program first. We're going to send a zero or a one that will actuate the LED on the ESP32. So if we get a one, we'll turn on the LED. If we get a zero, we'll turn off the LED. So let's um, just get into it. Um, just like in the last video, um, <clears throat> here we went over to extensions. We searched up Maven on VS Code uh, and we got this this VS Code extension, or you could just get the extension pack here, which includes Maven. So um, I would actually just get the extension pack so that everything works just well. Once you have that, we can go ahead and create our Maven project. Let's use the Maven archetype quick start and just use the latest version and spam enter to use the default um, values. Then we got to put it into a folder. So I'm going to make a UMass Java receiving demo. There you go. <clears throat> then the terminal here, it's going to generate a project for us, but in interactive mode. So it's going to ask us for like the version and whatever. We're, I'm just going to spam enter to use all the default values. And it's going to ask me to open the project, which I will do. There we go. And the first thing I'm going to do, just like in the last video, we're going to upload our keys here to our Java app. So all it takes is the a keys folder. And then we drag and drop our at keys file into that folder, like so. Now um, the next step is to go over to pom.xml, change the Maven compiler source and Maven compiler target to 1.8. <clears throat> then add um, the at platform as a dependency to our Maven project. So here I'm going to add a dependency tag um, with a group ID, which will be io.github.atsign foundation. Then the artifact ID would be at underscore client. <clears throat> with a version of 1.0 snapshot. There you go. And I'm just going to press always here. And um, to check to see if that our, that our Maven dependency was added successfully, we can go over to this Maven tab. If you don't have this Maven tab here in your Explorer, um, here I'll just hide it. You can go to the three dots up here to open Maven. Um, open our Maven project that we call demo over here open dependencies, click refresh if you need to, and you should see this uh, Maven dependency right here, io, github, at sign foundation, at client, with a bunch of other libraries under it as well. So once if you see that, then I think you're good to go. And then we can get right into coding. <clears throat> um, so the first thing we're gonna do is create our at sign object. So I'm gonna create at sign object. We're gonna import org.atsign.common.atsign. And um, to do that quickly in VS Code, by the way, you can highlight it like so, and then do Control Space. Um, that didn't work. Maybe now? Yeah, there you go. So instead of highlighting it, you just, um, if you get these squiggly lines, it's because you didn't import it. You do Control Space, import it like that. <clears throat> Let's name our variable um, Java, because our Java app is one at sign, and the ESP32 is another. So our Java at sign will be driving 433 and then our ESP32 at sign will be our IC761. So let me see we'll copilot as well. There we go. Next step is to create our at client object. So again, um, if you don't have this, you type in at client, then do control space and it should import like that. Get rid of these as well. <clears throat> Let's name it at client, and then we're going to use the factory method um, where we pass in the root URL as a string, and then secondly, we pass in the at sign of this app, which is our job at sign object, and the verbose, which is false. Um, I don't think we need false here actually. <clears throat> and we'll get an error because we didn't catch any exceptions that it threw. So we're just going to say, hey, let's just rethrow it in this method whatever it's called. Um, all right, uh, so next step, we're going to want to send either a zero or one to the ESP32. So I'm going to say 
we're going to start a loop that will run 500 times. And then at the very end, we're going to sleep for one second. <clears throat> then I'm going to store a string value is equal to zero. Then we're going to say if the value equals one, then we're going to say value is equal to zero. Otherwise, we're going to say value is equal to one. So this will just alternate between zero and one, the string value. Um, based on that, we're going to want to run at client.put. So we're going to put in a shared key here, which we'll build in a second. And then the value we pass is value. So now let's build the shared key here <coughs> um, that defines the key space, kind of like the space in our server for this value. So uh, let's build that up here. We make a shared key object. I'm going to name it shared key is equal to, we're going to use key builders dot shared key builder. And the shared by at sign is Java because it's the creator of the key. And then the shared with at sign right here is the ESP32 because we are sharing data with the ESP32. Then we need a key name. So we're going to name the key like LED and then we're going to build it. There you go. We have our shared key object and we just pass in into here. And um, the dot put method of that client is a completable feature. So we don't want to continue our code until we've successfully sent it. So we're going to run a dot get here. And this will just be some kind of like response from the server. Uh, just print out the response is response. And for the sake of it, let's also um, print out what value we're currently sending to the server like that. All right, um, this looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. All right, there we go. We're alternating sending zeros and ones, and here we're getting different commit IDs, which is a good sign as well. So now while this is running, let's uh, also code the ESP32 to receive this data. So I'm just going to go um, back to the Java app, actually. I'm going to do Control-C in the terminal to cancel this. And let's code the ESP32. So first, we're going to need the ESP32 at sign. We'll make this a pointer. Um, we're going to say new at sign <coughs> is at IC761. Now let's also make the Java at sign, which is driving 433. There we go. Now we have to make the at client object, which uh, is not a constant. Um, we're going to say at client is equal to new at client. And then at client takes, um, what does that client take? It takes the at sign and the keys. So first, actually, we need to get the keys. And we do that using the key reader. So here we're going to say const auto keys is equal to keys reader read keys. And we pass in the keys we want to read, which is in our data folder here. I see. So we just pass in ESP32, which is the value of the ESP32, not the pointer. <clears throat> now we pass in the at sign and the keys. There we go. Um, with that client, we also have to pcam authenticate. So this is um, pretty much step number five. Uh, we pass in the SSID and the password. Um, and just like in the last video, we made a constants folder, I mean file here, where we did um, define SSID, and then we also did define password. And then we included constants here at the top so that we can access these variables. All right. So now with this, um, let's uh, let's receive the data and then um, print it out for now. So what we're going to have to do is let's start a for loop. Let's run this 500 times. Then we're going to say, <clears throat> let's uh, generate an at key first. So at key is equal to new at key, which takes in, what does this take in? Oh, and by the way, how to do this, I press alt or command, and then you click on the class you want to look at, and then it'll bring you to the source most of the time. Um, so it takes in a key, shared by, and a shared with. So the key, we named it demo. If we look over here in our Java app, 
we named, no, we called it let LED. So it was LED, it's shared by Java and it's shared with us. That's the little tricky part here. So when we're constructing this at key, we know that the key name is LED because we just coded it. But the shared by at sign is the creator at sign. So the creator of the key, which is Java. Java is the one creating the key to share with us because it's shared with the shared with at sign is the ESP32. That key is shared with us. So that's um a little thing you have to wrap your head around. <clears throat> then we're gonna just allocate some memory for the data we receive. Or I guess we'll call it value just to remain consistent. So now let's do get at key. And we just pass in get at key. And then we're gonna say store it in this value variable. And it wants it wants the data, not the pointer. So we're gonna pass in the data. And then let's um, print this out. Um, I'm also going to put in some quotation marks like this. All right, this looks good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and build to make sure everything is oh, a okay so far. And you don't always have to run build. You could go straight to upload and monitor if you really wanted to. All right, now let's upload it. So I'm gonna hold down boot. I'm gonna press reset once, and then I'm gonna keep holding boot to put it into download mode. And once it starts writing, I can let go of the ESP32. So that's running. Um, let's start rerunning this application here. And hopefully this all works. <laughs> Oh, you might have seen it for a brief second there. We had a value of one. Um, we might be actuating the value too quickly here for the ESP32 to read. Um, so let's go ahead and add a longer delay, like 10 seconds. <clears throat> See here, we get a value of one. Um, we keep on getting values of one, so And after 10 seconds, this should go to value zero. Maybe we'll see a zero here. Oh, did we get one? Oh, there we go, we got one. Okay, well, that's how you get a value of ones and zeros of the Java app, sending it to the ESP32 and send it encrypted. Um, if you really wanted to, um, we could also make it turn on and off the LED. So just like in step 2B, um, let's define our LED pin here. Then we're going to say up here, pin mode of LED to be output. Then here we're going to say if value um, dot, do we have, no, this is C++, plus plus. if it's zero, we're going to say digital right LED low, else digital right LED high. All right. And now I'll upload this.
we're getting errors. Um, I don't know why. But um, let's just run it again, see what happens. When you start to get a weird error like this, what I found to work really well is maybe we're like stressing out the ESP32 too much because of all the encryption it's running. So if you run into this, um, you could erase the flash here. So I'm going to put into download mode and then I'm going to press erase flash. And then I'm going to have to re-upload these keys here and then also re-upload my code. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, let's upload our keys again. And let's upload our code. It's really nice out today. Just had a winter storm pass by and now it's sunny. All right, hopefully this works. I can kind of already see it's running a lot faster because of what we just did. <laughs> okay, and we're getting the same error. Hmm. I've noticed this just happens sometimes for no reason at all, so I'm going to try unplugging and re-plugging my ESP32. And let's try and monitor again. We don't need to re-upload because the code is already on it. Yeah, now it's getting really weird errors. It won't even connect to the root now. <clears throat> hmm. And now it just works all of a sudden. It's really weird. All right, well, now it works all of a sudden. Here I got a value zero. Um, so the LED was turned off and now I get a value one. Oh, the LED turned on, let's go. Okay, um, so when you start getting weird errors like that, just um, keep running it and eventually it'll work. I have a really good feeling that it has to do something with my Wi-Fi because my um, wireless, well, my Wi-Fi isn't really that good. <laughs> Um, so maybe at home you won't even get this error. I'm, I'm sure if I hotspotted to my ESP32 with my phone, this probably wouldn't happen, but oh well. Uh, and just turned on again because we got a value one. All right, well, that was um, sending data from Java to the ESP32, where the ESP32 received the encryption.